a very simple message today. Stop guessing. Stop guessing what is in your soil. <laughs> One of the most critical things that you can ever do is get a soil test. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna hop in the UTV, I'm gonna go up to the field. Let me show you some dirt. Okay, so I got kind of a funny story for you. I have a local, we have a local newspaper, a local county newspaper. It's actually kind of cool to get this thing, but there's a, I actually went and got this out of my firewood stack because I remembered this article and it's the local extension coordinator and she wrote an article and it came out last week when I was thinking about this too and just listen to this it seems it seems that nearly every call I receive ends in the same initial recommendation run a soil test why do my boxwoods have spots why tomatoes why my tomatoes didn't produce for me this year like they have in the past how much chicken manure should I put down on my pastures I don't intend to sound like a broken record, but multiple times a day, I ask if the client has run a soil test. That's one of the messages that I really want to get out to you guys today. Again, you, you don't know what's going on in your soil. You don't know what you should put down. You don't know if you have high phosphorus, low phosphorus. You don't know what your pH is. Get a soil test done. It is absolutely critical as you move along in your lawn care education, to learn about your soil. That's what I wanted to point out. I thought that article was kind of cool. Though it's hard as a rock and full of clay. <clears throat> Can you tell me what's wrong with my soil? Can you? No. And that's the whole point of this video is if you don't know what's going on inside your soil, you can really hurt it. You can actually poison your soil by putting down certain nutrients. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about if you're just guessing, you're gonna have problems growing crops and you're gonna have problems having a healthy lawn, everything. So let's go forward and uh, let's figure this out. So on a side note, this soil, even though we're in the middle of a drought, we're uh, coming up on eight weeks with one rainfall event with two tenths of an inch. <laughs> it's bad. Thank God for this irrigation and our pond back here. This soil is actually looking really good. Now we are practicing no-till regenerative farming out here. And we always have either armor on the soil or roots in the ground. Here on this field, I always have roots in the ground. This is my buck field. But this is just, the soil is just looking amazing out here. It's just all clumpy. Um, it has such good, such good sticky material inside of it. The root systems look phenomenal. I'm starting to get some darker soil in here. Man, this just looks, I'm getting that aggregate look to it. Man, it just really looks nice. So without my soil test, I would never have known that these fields were extremely high in potassium. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. You don't see that often. These fields are extremely high in potassium. That upper field over there is so high that when we would plant seeds over there, they would germinate and come up white and purple. So we've had to be, we've been planting things like legumes in here, and clover is a legume, and that has a tendency to eat up. I'm just keeping roots in the ground to try and eat up the phosphorus. But at the same time, I'm low on, excuse me, potassium. I'm low on phosphorus. Okay, so now let's talk about this back area. Totally different soil tests than up above, similar, Low on phosphorus, high on potassium. The pH, after my initial adjustment, I was averaging about a 4.9 here. And after my adjustments with my lime, and I'll talk about that in a minute, I've gotten back up to an average of about five or 5.4. 5 .5 this meter, I'll link to it down below. That's probably one of the best. That's probably the best 30 bucks you'll ever spend. Now. The lawn guides cover a lot of this stuff. So the lawn guides are up and they're free. We've had them out for years. Over 2 million people have used them. And why? Because we don't want your darn information. We don't want your email address. We don't want your name. <laughs> we don't want anything. You don't sign up for anything. You don't download an app. They're up, use them. Calendars, product links, everything. Get the lawn guides. Bookmark it on your phone, bookmark it on your computer so you always have it. Download the calendars so you know. So my backyard, now I'm treating this a little bit differently. Today I came out with, I ordered a product I really don't want you guys to sort of use because it's a 
12620. <laughs> it's a phosphorus adjustment, and you've got to be really careful with this product. I'll show it to you in a minute, but it can be really dangerous because it really is looks like salt. It's that fine or even finer than salt. And you really got to really, really take care if you're going to do a phosphorus adjustment with this. But I did put down some phosphorus. I did put some of that down here and I put down in front of the pond because I got dry soil. I can water it in. I'm not worried about my pond. But same thing, I'm going to use some of that up in the fields. So I'm specifically looking at all the nutrients in my lawn. I'm looking at my pH and doing adjustments. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about a pH adjustment out here. How am I going to do my pH adjustment? I did a previous video on lawn pH. You can go over to our website, and on our website, there's a search bar, and you can type in pH or soil test. And there's a recent, look for the most recent one I did, or you can go over to our channel and look for it. I talked to you about the application amounts for lime, how much pounds pounds per square feet. I use pelletized lime. That's, it's just easier than buying the white, the white powdery stuff, but even still, it's a mess. I make a recommendation that if you're going to get lime because the amount of pounds you got to put out, have Home Depot or Lowe's deliver it. Pay the 50 or 75 bucks to have it delivered. Uh, it's a lot of product you got to put down. You have to put down hundreds of pounds on your lawn to make adjustment. So if you have a low pH, you're going to put down lime to bring the pH up. If you have a high pH, I found a product actually on Amazon that you can buy. Uh, it's Johnson's Green something. I figured I'd link to it too. Um, if your pH is high, like an 8, and you want to bring it down to closer to a 7, you can use that product. Now, what is the good pH? The good pH is somewhere around a 6, 6.5, but I'm about a 5.4, 5.9 here. The fields are a 5.9, and, and I'm not really that worried about it. Yeah, I could use a little bit of lime, but I'm not going to freak out because plants are really adaptable. They can enjoy, they can grow and they can do well with a little bit of a pH range, but when you get really extreme, that's when you gotta be concerned. You gotta be concerned when you're way off, like I was, a 4.9 when I'm supposed to be closer to a six, or you're at an 8.5 and you should be closer to a 6.5 or a seven. That's when you need to do a pH adjustment. Look for that video. Okay, Doc, next question. How do I do my soil test? Well, let me show you what area you want to focus on. When I do my soil test, I want to focus on the first on the first few inches of soil that I can have an impact on and are in my root zone. So let me go ahead and see if I can pull a probe. I'll probably hit a rock. This is a soil probe. I'll put a link to it. Okay, so when you look at this sample right here, this is going to be my thatch layer. I want to get rid of my thatch layer. I do not want that thatch layer. What I want is I want basically from here to about here. I want those three inches of soil. That's what I want to test. So I do that all the time. I'll go in, I'll take a probe, I'll take that first layer away because I may have some fertilizer or some treatments in that first inch or so. So I want to get rid of that. I want to know this area right in here. Next. Um, you mix that up, oh, getting old, you mix that up and put it on a paper plate and let it dry, crumble it up, get rid of any grass, organic matter, roots. Because I do so much soil testing out here, I actually made up a little screen, it's just a piece of wire mesh, and I actually screen out sticks and grass and rocks. I put it on a paper plate, I let it dry out, make sure you're marking, keep track of what's what, because you will lose. I put mine in a soil sample bag and send mine off to Clemson. If you get the online test, there's a little container that you just sprinkle the dirt in there and then you close up the container and you send it off. But you really want to focus on skip the first inch, the thatch in the first inch and test down below. That's how you do it. Okay, Doc, so it's fall. What should I be doing to my lawn? If you have a warm season lawn, pretty much turn on Netflix and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it alone. Maybe put out a little bit of PGF balance if you hadn't had a soil test, but get a soil test. Just let your lawn go to sleep, man. Turn on Netflix and enjoy the winter. If you have a cool season lawn, all fast release nitrogen. A great product is green chalker. Put out green chalker, it's a granular. As soon as you wet it, it turns to water. That's what we're using here. It's the only thing that's going down here and on the back. 
green shocker. Once we get into the really cold weather, as long as you don't have snow on the ground, Put out Humachar. Start applying Humachar. Just pound it down, pound it down, pound it down. You're going to be driving carbon into your soil all winter long. And then come springtime, you'll have to use less fertilizer. That biochar, because it's micronized, will slowly work down in the soil. It'll hold on to nutrients. It'll hold on to water. And you will reduce your requirements for fertilizers every year that you're using it. We've proven that time and time again. So anyways, I got a bunch of videos coming out. By the way, uh, Anna's helping me out with my Instagram. I don't really do Instagram. She does a lot of funny stuff. It's for fun, guys. Go over to our Instagram page. She puts up some funny stuff. She's really good at making those little shorts. I'm not really a short guy, as you can tell. I'm a talker. So go over to the Instagram page. Check that out. Uh, push that like button. And uh, drop a comment down below. And I'll talk to you later. Duck.